welcome to Phoenix Kitchen. My name is Stacy Williams and I'm your host. We're going to talk about fire, food, and flavor. We'll discuss recipes and techniques for both indoor and outdoor, where we'll add that secret ingredient, smoke, to get the most flavor out of all of our recipes. We're glad that you joined us today. While you're here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our recipes. If you like the content, hit the thumbs up and leave us a comment. If you make the recipe, don't forget to share a pic. We're on the road to our first 1,000 subscribers. When we hit 1,000, we'll be giving away a five-piece Lodge cast iron cookware set. To be entered for the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe and leave us a comment. Now, on to our video. Hey everyone, how's it going today? We're going to be looking at how to make this delicious chicken pot pie. Perfect for all the cold weather that we're having, if you live in an area that has the nice cold weather. This is going to be a half scratch recipe. This simply means we're going to use a few store-bought ingredients to make it quicker and easier so we can do this any night of the week. So let's look at how we're going to make this thing happen. The first thing we're going to do is make a little compound butter to rub our chicken. Make sure that it's seasoned properly. So I've got one stick of butter that I've had out on the counter getting soft so I can work with it. We're going to put that butter in a bowl and we're going to add to it a few seasonings. So I've already measured out our seasonings and in the first bowl I've got salt, pepper, garlic, and paprika. And in the second bowl I've got our herbs. We've got thyme, rosemary, basil, and tarragon. So we're going to get the butter kind of mashed up and ready to go. We're going to add those spices in and then we're just going to stir those spices around until they're evenly distributed through that butter. Now this is something that you can make ahead of time and put back in the freezer. Just wrap it up in some uh, plastic wrap and bring it out at any time that you want to add some butter to a steak or a piece of chicken. Right? Compound butters are great for cooking and finishing products. So got our nice herbs there. Going to add those in and get this thing stirred up. So now time to move on to prepping our chicken. We've got to make sure that we reach inside the cavity, depending on what kind of whole chicken you buy at your local grocer. Uh, many times you're going to find your heart and liver in there, the neck bone. We don't want to toss those. Those are excellent for making the chicken stock. Uh, so we're going to set those to the side. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and take our knife and trim off some of the excess fat that's around the cavity just to clean it up. And that fat will also cook down nicely into the stock to make sure we're getting that great chicken flavor. So once we get this thing trimmed up, we're actually going to use our knife to go under the skin and separate it from the breast meat. And that's where we're going to rub that compound butter. <laughs> Alright, I've got the skin detached and pushed back, and as you can see right then, using my big clunky hands, I ripped the skin. If we were going to be serving this as just a roasted whole chicken, I would be extremely upset, because now I'm not going to get that beautiful skin presentation. But since this is going to be pulled and put into a chicken pot pie, it's not going to matter as much. So we're going to go ahead and grab that butter, and we're just going to smear it all around on those breasts, and we're going to get it covered up by the skin. The reason we want the little skin pocket is to simply keep the butter in place as it melts. It holds it on the breast rather than letting it run off the back of the chicken. So what I'll do here, since I accidentally ripped that skin, is I'm going to use a couple of toothpicks to pin it in place while it cooks. And it'll hold it very nicely for us. Now once we've got the butter and everything inside, we are going to go ahead and lightly oil the skin. And we're going to go ahead and use the remainder of the seasonings to go all around the outside of that chicken because we want the skin to absorb flavor the same way that that, that breast meat does.
right, so the chicken's all seasoned up. We're gonna go ahead and pop this thing in our preheated oven. We've got it preheated to 375 degrees, and it's gonna take around an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to bring this chicken to 165 degrees internal at the thickest part. So I'm gonna set the oven timer for an hour and a half, and then we'll come back and check the temp. Okay, so it's been about 90 minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this out of the oven and give it a quick temperature check. Now, this particular bird is only about four pounds, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna be at the appropriate temperature, but we always wanna double check with our thermometer to make sure. Okay, this thing is reading 160, and we're gonna to have to let it rest, and that temperature will go ahead and carry over and hit the 165 that we're looking for. Uh, anytime that you're cooking, you wanna make sure that you're coming in just under your target temperature by five or six degrees because as the food rests and those juices redistribute back into the muscle tissue where they should be to have juicy food versus dry food, you're going to have the temperature continue to rise. Remember these bones inside this chicken, because this is a whole chicken, they're gonna act like little ceramic heaters and keep cooking this thing internally. So we wanna make sure that we're not going all the way to the final temperature in the oven because then we'll end up with a dry, overcooked product. All right, so our chicken's been resting for about 15 minutes and we can go ahead and work with it. Now you'll notice that I am using my thermal gloves to work with it because this, temp this chicken is still hot and we're gonna have to get in and pull this meat apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the legs off to start with, uh, cut the thigh off, get the wings just basically pulled off and then we'll cut the breast out and pull all of the meat I'm going to save the skin to the side. I don't really want skin in my chicken pot pie, but I gotta tell you guys, you've seen me in the video, you know there's a little belly there. I love a nice crispy chicken skin, I bet you do too. That's why we rub it with that little bit of oil, it's got the butter on the other side, all those herbs and spices. This chicken skin is gonna be delicious. I'm just gonna go ahead and put those to the side and those will be a nice little treat later. Now, I don't have to have all of the skin off, I can go ahead, you know, little pieces are not gonna bother us in the chicken pot pie. We just don't want a lot of it in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this chicken pulled and then we'll get to making the center of the pot pie. So we've taken our chicken, pulled it from the bones, put it in a container, and put it in the fridge. It's gonna need to stay in the fridge for a while because we've gotta make stock and we've gotta make the filling. And it'll come back to being warm while it's cooked inside of the pie. So we're gonna start off with a nice big pot of water. That's it, just water. But this water is gonna become delicious chicken stock. And the way we're gonna do this is by adding to it. And we're gonna start with the bones and all of the little bits of chicken and skin that are left on it. We're gonna add those gizzards and livers and hearts and the neck, all the giblets that came from inside. We're gonna drop those in there. And we're gonna let this boil and we're gonna add some salt, some pepper, some garlic, rosemary, thyme, all those wonderful flavors that are on the chicken already. We're gonna add more into the stock. We're gonna bring this to a boil and we're gonna let it reduce down to about half. Then we're gonna add more water to it to bring that level back up. And we're gonna let it continue to boil and we're gonna bring it down again to half. We're gonna end up, uh, when this is all said and done, with about a gallon of chicken stock. Now, I don't need nearly a gallon of chicken stock for this particular recipe, the chicken pot pie, but we're making things ahead of time. We're not gonna use that entire chicken in the pot pie either. And that chicken stock and the part of the chicken that we don't use will become delicious chicken noodle soup in a different recipe, right? This helps us make it through the week a little easier because you can cook once and get a couple meals out of it. Right. 
and while our pot of water has been getting nice and hot and those bones are getting happy chopped up just rough chop uh, a few cloves of garlic you don't even have to peel them just give them a smash to release the oils drop them in a couple rough cuts of carrots onions and celery because all of those flavors are flavors that we've come to expect when we're eating chicken right so we're going to go ahead and make sure that chicken stock has those flavors built right in all right our chicken stock's been boiling now for about three hours it's reduced down by half we've added more it's reduced down by half again and actually I added a little bit more and let it reduce down one more time so what we're gonna do we're gonna strain this into a large container we don't want all of the bits and pieces of chicken and the carrots and the onions and everything that we put in so we're just gonna pour this through the strainer let it catch all of the solid matter what we're really looking for is just the liquid and as you can see there, I'm just as messy as you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been cooking or what you've been doing, everybody can make a mess. And I do it better than anyone. So once we get these things all strained out, our chicken stock is ready to go. You can see I've got it in a little Tupperware container. This will go into the fridge and uh, we'll be able to use that for many, many delicious items. <laughs> All right, so now we've finished the scratch part of the recipe. From here out, we're gonna be using store-bought ingredients. Everything we've done so far can be done over the weekend, stored in the refrigerator, until you're ready for the night that you wanna serve chicken pot pie. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into our, our large pan with about five cups of chicken stock to start. We're gonna go ahead and bring that up I can always add more chicken stock later if I need to in order to thin things out. Now to this chicken stock, we're gonna add, like I said, just some store-bought items. I'm gonna use a can of cream of celery soup and a can of cream of chicken. And guys, I'm talking about just the cheap Campbell's condensed soup, right? It's gonna be rehydrated by this chicken broth. We're gonna go ahead and add to that also a bag of mixed vegetables out of the frozen food section of your local grocery store. Uh, you know, sweet peas, carrots, corn, green beans, just a bag like that. Pick your favorite vegetables, what you would like to be in this chicken pot pie. You know, those are the ones that we use. But we just add those right in. We give everything a stir. We taste it. Super, super important to taste it and make sure that we're ready to go. We've got enough salt, we've got enough pepper. Do we need more basil? Do we need more rosemary? This is your chance to add it. This is gonna be the inside of your chicken pot pie. And how tasty it is depends on what you do at this time. You get to make it the way you want it. So we give it a stir, we let it come up to heat. We're gonna add the vegetables in, we're gonna let them cook and we're gonna taste this and find out what we need to add if we need to add anything. The best part about this is it will not take long to cook. This is gonna be sitting on this heat 15, 20 minutes tops. Okay, so I did have one more from scratch part. The bag of frozen vegetables I bought didn't have onions, and I really can't have chicken pot pie without onions. So we simply chopped up one little onion, dropped it in the pot. And of course, celery too. <laughs> So now that our vegetables are unfrozen and our onions and celery have had a chance to soften up, we're going to go ahead and add our final ingredients to the mix, and that's going to be the chicken. Now the chicken that I pulled, I did go ahead and chop it up a little bit, and we're adding about half of that whole chicken to our batch. We're going to give it a little stir and let that continue to cook, and we're going to begin to get our crust ready.
right, so we're going to be cooking this in our good old trusty 10 inch lodge cast iron skillet. And we're going to do this in a very simple manner. First of all, even though this is a nonstick, well seasoned pan, we're still going to go in and grease this pan because we're going to be applying a crust all the way around that bottom and we want to make sure that it's able to come out without any sticking whatsoever. So even if you think that you're in good shape and you're nonstick, you still need some grease. Gotta, gotta oil these pans up, gotta have them ready, gotta make sure that nothing's gonna stick. Go the extra mile, do the detail, don't get caught up in the fact that it's supposedly nonstick. Nonstick means that it shouldn't stick. It's not gonna stick much. It's not gonna stick as bad as a regular pan, right? We want to make sure that we get this thing greased and ready. Uh, I'm using good old fashioned lard. I mean, if you're going to make it taste good, you got to do it right. You could use Crisco, you could use Pam spray, you could use vegetable oil. Um, you don't want to use something with a low smoke point like olive oil, uh, but you could use those if you want. But I figure if we're going all out, we might as well do this right. So into the bottom of this skillet, we're going to go with good old Pillsbury Crescent Roll dough. Now, normally I enjoy using the unmarked single roll sheet of Crescent Roll dough to do this. Uh, you know, my, my local grocer did not have those in stock, so I had to get regular ones. But because of the way this stuff is made, it's super simple to take these little tear points and just squeeze them together, and you'll get the solid piece that you're looking for. So we go ahead and get this thing out. We're gonna roll it out, put it into the pan, get it shaped up, and then into the oven, 350 degrees for 15 minutes. We need to cook the bottom part of the crust. If you put it in raw, it will not get done while you're cooking the entire pot pie. And you'll have a raw bottom and a burnt top. So we're gonna put this in, we're gonna cook it for the 15 minutes, then we'll bring it out, put the filling in, put the top crust on, and then cook the remainder of it. Right. with our bottom crust in the oven it's time for us to give our filling a check see how we're doing looks like we're thickening up nicely vegetables are really starting to soften up and come together the house smells amazing if you see the little fur ball in the bottom of the left the dog has come in he knows there's food on the stove but just like the rest of us he has no choice but wait Okay, and our bottom crust has been in the oven for 15 minutes now. We're going to go ahead and pull that out so we can fill it. And there you can see it is golden brown and ready to go. And we're simply going to ladle in our pot pie filling and then put on the top crust. <laughs> Alright, it's time for us to go ahead and put the top crust on and then back into the oven for another 15 minutes to cook that top crust and make sure everything is warmed all the way through. Now, one thing, if you really want to be extra and, and go the extra mile, before you put that on, you could lay in some fresh basil and rosemary and thyme just to really bring that out and maybe a little sprinkle of flake salt. But if you're in a hurry, and you've already tasted it and you know it's delicious, so just go ahead and put this crust on. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's pinching these edges together since I didn't have the non-perforated sheet. But we'll go ahead and make sure it goes around and covers everything. The last thing we want to do before we put it into the uh, oven is to put on an egg wash. We want to get that nice, beautiful, shiny, golden brown, crispy topped finish and that's how we do it was, is with an egg wash. If you're not familiar with an egg wash, it's really simple. Take an egg, scramble it up, there you go, and then just simply brush it on. Uh, you will see some people who do it, they'll add a little water to it because they're looking for a thinner finish, 
and that's fine if that's what the recipe calls for. Here, I want a really nice, shiny golden brown with a really nice, crisp um, outside. So I'm going to go ahead and smother this thing with nothing but straight egg. Once I get it brushed all the way around, it's going back in that oven. Remember that oven was set at 350 and we're going to cook it for 15 minutes. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. Our top crust should be finished. Everything should be heated all the way through. And we bring it out and look at that. 100% absolutely gorgeous. You can see it just under the crust there bubbling a little bit. This thing smells amazing. I know that it's going to taste amazing. The hardest thing in the world is going to be waiting for it to cool down a bit. Uh, just like when we cook the chicken, we want it to let it rest so that the juices redistribute it. Here, we want to allow this thing to sit and cool a little bit before we cut into it so that that center will thicken up. And as you'll see here in a minute when I cut into it, I didn't quite wait long enough because that center will start to ooze out. And you know what? That's fine too because I've got a spoon. We can pick up that center. We can put it on the plate and everything is going to taste absolutely amazing. So cut it how you want it. If you want squares, cut squares. If you want triangles, cut triangles. I look at this like, hey, it's a pie. So we're going to go ahead and cut it into a pie shape. And we're going to scoop that out and put it onto a plate. delicious half scratch chicken pot pie easy to make easy to eat absolutely delicious really hope that you enjoyed this recipe hope you'll get a chance to try it and join us next time thanks everyone